now we have a discussion uh, panel and distinguished members of the panel. Uh, the panel is called uh, you know, How to Make Teachers' Profession More Attractive. Uh, so uh, the participants are Clea Mar uh, Marchaitite, Vice President of Lithuanian School Students uh, Union. Laba diena, Clea. Thank you. Uh, then we have Sniegolė Bagočienė, uh, teacher at Vilnius Lietuvos Pro Gymnasium. Laba diena. Sveiki. Uh, sveiki. Tai vat Sniegolė pas mus dalyvauja gyvai, o taip pat uh, turime Jurgitą... We also have Jurgitą Horomanskytę. Sorry, who is the director of administration? Yra uh, Ukmergė um, Švietimo. Hello. Labai malonu. Labai malonu, labai diena. And Zane Olena, project leader of the Latvian National Project Skola 2030. Hello. Labai diena. Labai diena. <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll start this in English. Mes pradėsime anglų kalba. Uh, uh, and I want to uh, ask a few questions uh, and, and give an opportunity to... Uh, Zane to explain to us more about the project and the Latvian situation uh, and attempts in Latvia to kind of make the profession more attractive. So please, could you explain us a bit more about your, uh, your project and uh, what you are doing uh, in this regard? Yes, hello, and thank you for opportunity to speak today. Um, real very briefly, there are kind of two experiences that I could bring to the discussion today. One is um, I'm now head of curriculum implementation for uh, our schools, um, and we are we've just uh, rewritten curriculum for from preschool till upper secondary school, and the thrust is to really make learning and teaching more personalized um, and to really include every kid and to uh, really make sure they have the 21st century competencies they need in, in the schools, which is probably a goal that um, your schools aspire to as well as in many other countries. Um, and then I have also in the past have been um, a CEO of the Latvian organization called Teach for Latvia or Mission Possible, or uh, I think you have a similar one in, in, in Lithuania uh, for, for quite many years, um, where we try to attract new teachers into schools um, and to stay there as well as to advance into in, into school leadership positions. So those are kind of two experiences based on which I'll I'll make some comments today. Um, in terms of the curriculum reform effort, then um, I, I'd say our main challenge as well as goal is to really change the organizational culture in schools. Um, I think one of the main um, I mean, not a very important factor for uh, making teaching profession more attractive is is having schools where a teacher is not alone, where a teacher feels uh, supported and feels that they're working in a team with other teachers. I think the perception for years uh, about the teaching profession has been that um, a teacher has to be very self-sufficient, very powerful, very knowledgeable, never make mistakes. Um, a teacher uh, may not have any problems and may not share them because otherwise you're a bad teacher in the school. And that's what we've seen um, our new teachers experience quite a bit that they are not they're they're a bit afraid to speak up in the in the teaching uh lounge um, and really share that they may not have everything going well in the classroom because they're afraid that others will view them as a as a bad teacher. And so um, during our curriculum reform project, and we had um, we worked with a hundred schools uh, for about three years as pilots. Um, our major effort was to really establish uh, collaboration and learning culture in these schools. Um, and so in many schools, they started um, uh, learning groups um, uh, with teachers uh, um, kind of working towards the same goal um, and trying to improve their teaching practice and gradually establishing, I'd say, small task forces in the school um, to really improve the way how they teach and to get more feedback on a, on a daily basis um, uh, about their practice. And so that's that's been a very, very important um, 
I'd say first step in their ability to do something um, already okay. kind of on a larger scale. I, wa I want to involve in, into the discussion Yurgita, who is from Tauragea region. And I was wondering, Yurgita, whether you could also comment on this kind of on, on prestige and, and trying to attract, uh, trying to attract uh, teachers, best teachers, to not just, you know, maybe in the capital it is easier, there are more choices in big cities, but, uh, you know, in Tauragea, what are the challenges? And uh, is, that, is, is that really, you know, do, do you feel the sh a shortage of teachers there? Or the choice, at least, you know, that you have is limited? Sure. Should I speak in English? Or yes, let's speak in English a little bit because I want to return back to, uh, to uh, okay. Zane sure. and then we'll switch back to Lithuanian. Okay, no problem. I, I represent four, four municipalities. So it's Pagege, Shilute, oh. Tauragea, and Yurbarkas. That's the Tauragea region. Okay. So I'm really thankful that you mentioned about the capital city and the differences between capital and provincial towns or provincial municipalities, because uh, there actually is a very big difference in the supply and demand of teachers. We all know that young people are looking forward to escape provincial towns and go to universities, uh, uh, you know, get an education, see and, and enjoy the city life, and, and usually they stay there. And so the smaller provincial towns, they face a big demand of uh, various professions, and teachers are among those. And uh, different municipalities, because, because it's a uh, municipal policy, usually, apply different rules how to attract teachers. And um, so uh, in my region that I represent, they are experiencing with uh, a bit of uh, uh, financing or compensating for teachers to reach their work with uh, financial incentives. But also, for example, Torage uh, municipality, the last year they invested in uh, teachers' uh, education by providing uh, uh, qualification courses in uh, teachers' lead tech programs so that they would experience uh, uh, new ways how to work and combine with technology and primary school kids. Okay. But uh, but still, there is a shortage of uh, teachers, and usually a shortage of subject teachers. Okay, so how do you how do you solve the shortage? I mean, uh, so one of the ways you are saying some financial incentives. Anything else? Uh, anything else that? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure that your financial incentives. You know, uh, you have limited resources, and so you know you cannot probably you know really provide a, you know, a very sort of high, uh, high level of uh, salary or some additional perks. But on the other hand, maybe in the region, uh, the profession as such, teacher's profession, is more prestigious. Maybe people still have kind of more, because of, you know, fewer opportunities, maybe people look at teachers and say, okay, this is a profession that is still more prestigious. Is there a difference? Do you find this as sort of a bonus point? Mm. I would answer with a question that probably there are no studies done to, to find this out, whether there is a difference in the how, uh, uh, let's say, provincial towns value a teacher's education uh, versus uh, what this perception is in the capital. But from what I understand, <clears throat> a teacher's job at a school is a valuable job in a very limited supply of jobs in rural areas. So if you have a small municipality like Pagegi, for example, uh, so the teacher's job is of a very important value because it's a job that generates income to a large family. And if a teacher loses the job, for example, the school is closed due to some sort of reforms, the family loses income. So in that area, in that case, I would, I would assume that the teacher's uh, profession in the smaller municipalities is more valued. Okay, uh, Zania, coming back to you, uh, I, I want to hear a bit about uh, 
challenges in Latvia in regards to, you know, to the sort of Riga and uh, other regions. Uh, do, you, do you see the same issues uh, and challenges when you are uh, thinking about enhancing the sort of attractiveness of teachers' profession? profession? Sure, yes, I think the, uh, there's always the issue of the market as well. So, for example, in Riga, there are more opportunities for young people to actually to choose whatever they want to do. So there, there's, there's quite also a turnover of teachers in the larger cities because uh, there are more attractive uh, propositions, which are not the case in the rural areas. Uh, and yes, once a teacher goes, may, for example, retires in a rural school, it's very hard to get somebody uh, else instead. Uh, because they've been there since the Soviet times, actually, uh, with quite good education at that point. Uh, and so it's it's really hard to get. So, so I think, I mean, there are a number of things that, I mean, for one is schools by themselves um, cannot really survive unless there is economic development um, that brings attractive proposition to also the spouse of the new teacher because the, the family has to live there not just one not just the teacher himself or herself okay so the, the, the school network is definitely an issue um, and also okay. so what do you do so what do you do then I mean are there any programs that you have to you know to sort of enhance the attractiveness of these positions in regions or or is there some are there some sort of incentives for that uh on an yeah, I mean, one, there is a program that's kind of grown out of the uh, teach for latvia program which is now a partnership between universities and uh, ministry of education and schools it's called mati Pack, sort of the power to uh, to teach uh, they place they 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 uh, put quite a lot of resource into attracting new teachers, uh, and now placing a hundred teachers annually. This was this is not a second cohort into the schools around the country, and there's special emphasis on attracting STEM teachers, which is which is where the shortage is is um, the most the, the hardship is the most is in STEM teachers. So that's the sciences and technology and math. Um, so that's that's one uh, one program, but certainly um, figuring out where schools can actually sustainably keep existing is a very important another proposition that needs to that that it, and so there's a lot of negotiations also with local authorities to to ensure that there actually will be uh, enough students for teachers to have a full teaching load, which is a very important um, issue as well in in terms of. Uh, because if, if if the teachers we call them mobile brigades so if a teacher just teaches four lessons in one school let's say a physics teacher in a small rural school and then they run to the next school and teach another four lessons in another school uh, it's very hard uh, for this principal to really uh, make sure this teacher is involved in in the kids lives and and really delivers high quality education mm. so that that's a very very important consideration when we think about um, the way so, so this means that the teachers uh, probably need broader um, education so they can teach more subjects at least uh, similar subjects and that's one direction where we're going so it's they're not so highly specialized that they can only teach one subject mm -hmm. Yeah. That is that is part of the solution that we're also, um, uh, uh, it's actually happening right now. Okay. It sounds very much, uh, the situation is somehow sounds very similar to what we have in Lithuania and the solu some of the solutions, uh, you know, for, uh, for, for these regions as well. Now, Zaina, I have to thank you very much for your, you know, for your input. Uh, I think it's 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 actually valuable to hear that you know some of the challenges are actually quite similar. Uh, I, I'll switch now to Lithuanian. You can stay and listen, uh, you know, if if you feel like. And also, you know, if, you know, if you are around, then I can ask you maybe one more question somewhere. But now we are switching back to Lithuanian, and uh, and um, I, I want to involve more participants into the discussion. So. Thank you again for, for your uh, input and for participating. Um, Good. Now, switching to the Lithuanian language, switching gear, but staying on the same, well, uh, issues. Shall we uh, talk about different perspectives? Something we started about, the situation in the regions. Um, as opposed to the situation in the cities. 
Singole. Uh, what do you think? You work not that far away from Vilnius, but do you think that actually maybe what about the freedom of teachers? Maybe they can move from one school to another, uh, thus creating more uh, possibilities. Yes, I think we have more possibilities than the regions because, as has been said, <clears throat> many young people leave their rural communities on the countryside and most of them never come back. So the uh, rotation, let's say, in of teachers, the turnover, mm, yes, it is significant. I, I can choose which school I want to work at, and a lot depends on the teacher, I, I think. If the teacher chooses uh, to stay in the same school, well, what can you do? I am an IT teacher, IT teacher, but my, my mm, maybe competences are go beyond the IT. We have the workshop and I administer those workshops. Uh, and and Feb Lab, Lab, that's what you call it. We have lasers, laser uh, uh, drills, and we have uh, 3D uh, printers. We work with lots of uh, micro sensors, microbytes, etc. It's the fourth year, actually, that we've been working along these lines. And I am both engineering specialist, so I have many hats, so to say. Um, and quite versatile, jack of all trades, in a way. And I'm not sure when, uh, when the question arises as to the prestige of the teacher's profession, I don't understand the question. This is an ongoing um, creative process, and it's, it's probably the best opportunity to disclose, to reveal your potential your creative potential, no limits to that. Very interesting, clear. Moving towards you, what's your perspective? If we compare the regions and the cities, do you think that you, meaning you represent the students of high schools, do they see the difference? What's your take? Do they think there's a difference of quality education or? Good question, indeed. The direct answer would be yes. Yes. The students do feel and those differences, but I remember the discussion yeah, that there is a shortage of teachers in the countryside. Yes, I agree. On the other hand, the non-formal education, uh, it's, it's not really provided. Not that many options or le leisure, um, let's say, um, entertainment again. Mm. Scarce sort of provision of services. And there are few spaces for younger people uh, on, in the regions, so there is a shortage. At the same time, as far as I understand, something I'm interested in, moving over to Surgita, the question is, when we uh, voiced the problems in smaller communities, in smaller towns or townships, something Zane was talking about, that quite often the school community becomes extinct. Why? Just because the teachers have to run, to move from one school, um, having part of the workload to another school. Mm, just turn for a living. So meaning that there's no school community any longer. Though after um, just being a teacher for four classes, he moves or she moves somewhere else. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, this is a problem. You are right. The teacher, of course, 
has to, well, has to care for his economic incentives. So, yeah, he has to get to receive remuneration and he has to have a workload. And I'm not sure whether it's only in the region, maybe something happening in the um, uh, cities, but subject teachers, uh, physics, chemistry, etc., they have to move in between the schools and they have no time to integrate to the school community. And uh, let's say we see one of the creative teachers, Snegola, um, uh, wearing many hats and head of uh, Fad Lab, etc. Yeah. That's the way forward. And I want to react to Claire's idea. I have two kids. I don't know what we miss living in the regions. Extracurricular activities so that some other environment, let's say museums, galleries, kind of continuation or follow up of um, the, the activities in a classroom where you can test something, where you can touch it, maybe some even going to plants or, or factories, or going to the same as the parliament or the president's office, some other challenging environment. In the regional, in the regions, we don't have that. And schools have to invest more. Why? Because if you want to take your your students to school, you have to find the um, funding of in the same basket, which is allocated for um, each single student. So it's much more complicated. Uh, on the other hand, maybe it's an opportunity. Just reflecting, the, uh, one colleague from Finland said today that, let's say, they teach forests. Uh, the forest is some, on average 700 meters away from every single uh, person living in Finland. I'm not referring to the forest in Lithuania, but maybe in your case, a closer bond with nature could be enriching uh, experience. And, uh, let's say if you study swamps or, or just the anything, plants, something that you are surrounded uh, with. This is again a phenomenon, uh, just learning and teaching, but again, do teachers have time for that? Do they have the competencies? Uh, in order to to be engaged in this inf informal uh, learning. I think you both asked the question and you answered it. Of course, everything depends on the individual teacher. And in this case, I don't think there are any differences between urban rural teachers. Uh, because when I was listening to Snegola, we can see she's passionate, she's committed, she's She's yes. She she. is and she can um, she can actually inspire her students and they can only follow suit. Looking at this passionate, uh, charismatic teacher, and I can imagine how interesting her classes are. So it depends on the personality. And going back to the motivation of a teacher, or let's say the motivation for a young person to choose a career pathway of a teacher. I remember uh, one guest today from Norway started her presentation saying that the teachers, uh, the teacher's profession is the profession which we have the possibility to observe for 12 years. That's amazing. And yeah, it just gives to um, yeah, why, why should we choose uh, the teacher's profession? I think this observation for 12 years, when we observe our teachers, maybe we haven't met enough mm, charismatic teachers, mm, or passionate teachers, maybe most of them were exhausted, tired, um, because of the workload, because of the uh, uh, child's rights, sort of compliance, etc., tied because of all the reforms. Now we start to talk about the new reform, millennium schools. Yes, it's nice. 
But I, from what I know, some schools are having um, different opinions. They think, oh, new uh, sort of government, new educational reform, nothing new. Yes, I just want to remind everybody who's listening that you can always pose a question in a slight platform near the hashtag and table for um, questions. Um, feel free, don't hesitate for the questions. Now, I would like to continue this, or to focus on this idea uh, voiced by Jurgita. Do you feel that you, as a teacher, you have too excessive workload um, imposed on your shoulders, too much paperwork, and that you are overburdened and you cannot feel comfortable um, to introduce innovations or some... No, never. Yeah, I find it problematic to fill in certain uh, papers. I, I don't like administrative, uh, just paperwork. But, but it's not on a daily basis, and I wouldn't say it's really tormenting or suffocating or um, that I cannot find a spare minute to fill in these. I will, I'm also a class teacher. So there are things to do, <laughs> to be done, but but I don't feel any uh, more desperate. Maybe you, your school is magic, maybe your um, Lithuanian pro-gymnasium, yes, it is magic. And, and Anya says maybe your students are also sort of magical. Yeah, probably. I have Work, been working for four years and I uh, have seen growth of our school and as I said Lab Lab was established and 3D dimensions and we are becoming more and more innovative um, every single day and you don't lack any any resources meaning you don't want to buy an updated version of 3D printer no, that's not a problem. I think we have enough uh, material, sort of, um, and we, just an example, uh, I, I take my uh, students to Vilnius Germinas Technical University and we take a trolley and they keep talking, um, just uh, in the trolley, and they are just, I don't know, maybe uh, nine or ten years old, and they keep talking about drilling lasers, etc., when on a trolley bus, and people or other passengers keep looking at these kids, uh, because, yeah, that's, they speak about certain things uh, <laughs> that are Greek to uh, people around, lasers, sonars, etc., meaning that they are they are passionate about it. They 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 want to um, recognize the world because um, yes, clear and question to you. I think that even in Shilute there are teachers who have established a robotic school and they keep developing it. The way I understand that there are possibilities everywhere, but but do you think it's the teachers actually um, up to the teachers? to do that or do you think there is a shortage of resources in regional schools rural schools because sometimes teachers complain they say we would like to have um, that kind of laboratory would like our computers to be um, upgraded and we'd like some state-of-the-art technology and do you think this is a problem or is it the problem of the competences of a teacher basically I think that if we have lots of resources, state-of-the-art equipment, but there are no competent teachers, mm, you know, I'm not sure whether these innovations will not be wasted. Yeah, they will be put on the shelves. 
And I can uh, say from my own personal experience, I've seen cases like that. The best version would be a motivated teacher, well equipped with certain equipment, devices, um, so that he or she uh, could improve um, the teaching methodology. And we talked about the teacher's role during those 12 years. I agree that the number of passionate, inspiring teachers who could inspire uh, students um, to pursue the cognition of the world are very few. I have met during those 12 years maybe a few, and sometimes you feel, if you don't feel strong in a certain subject, but if there is a motivating teacher, then my understanding, my perception of the subject might change. And you are what? You are leaving school this uh, spring, yeah. Which school do you represent? I am from Alitus, Al Alitus, gymnasium probably, yeah, Alitus. That's middle of Lithuania, and uh, but um, I don't know whether Alitus is a town or a city. I'm not sure. Somewhere in the middle. But do you see? Um, or do you think that there is a shortage of some teachers in your school, and uh, because of that shortage, uh, retired uh, teachers still are made to work? Those who would rather uh, <laughs> go into their retirement, or do you think that the new generation of teachers already has come? I think, yes, we see cases that certain gaps or vacancies have to be filled in, and I wish um, the situation were different. It sometimes happens that a teacher is found from somewhere, but it turns out that he or she doesn't have even relevant competencies for the subject, even, even though that teacher is introduced as a ah, most knowledgeable person, an expert, etc. So you have experience of that, yeah? Right. Not once. No, not once. Not once. Believe me, more than once. Hmm. Natai uh, naujus, uh, naujus mokytojus. Aš gal truputį pasukčiau kalba Kaimo net mokyklose mes puikiai žinom ir Šiaulių regione, ne, yra žymioji mokykla, kuriai vadovauja ne, nerealus direktorius ir visi apie tą mokyklą žino. Taip, tai, tai ką aš noriu pasakyti, kad... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It is very important. Uh, a director is very, very important. If a director has a lot of ideas, if he has good financial skills, if he or she looks for every opportunity so then, uh, then, then the situation might change, and uh, there is a region uh, where first grade students study robotics. Uh, they have STEM laboratory, but they have a wonderful principal, a very effectively working principal. I did face uh, the case when some time schools switch the principals uh, uh, and and um, and they say well how did it come uh, well they say okay municipality broad is ready and uh, we didn't know how to work 
uh, with them. You sometimes laugh, but then you think, okay, oh my God, it is. Uh, it reminds of the hospitals which buy laser equipment and do not have professionals to work with the technologies. So STEM, okay, STEM, everybody's speaking about STEM laboratories, uh, Mm, uh, for example, in Torge region, uh, we are establishing currently a STEM laboratory, and we did face a huge problem to select the head of the laboratory. And when you don't have the head, when you can't find um, the authority who is well aware of the situation, who is professional, it is very difficult. As far as I understand, we still do not have the head of the STEM laboratory, and the process is underway, it's an ongoing process so far. Sniagwala, the function or the role of the principal or uh, authorities, school authorities, is this the chain which can make a breakthrough or, on the other hand, kind of turn toward regression? Yes, quite a lot depends uh, on the administration and on the school principal. Um, I am very glad of my school's uh, authorities because uh, um, uh, the top management of my school allow me to be creative. I have to approach them with different proposals, suggestions. I'm not put aside. They say, okay, try and do this or let's try and do together. And we are growing daily and I'm very, very glad about about the top management of my school. Quite a lot depends on the top management. Uh, when did you decide to become a teacher? Yes, I graduated from pedagogical studies that I didn't work as a teacher and I didn't think that I might become a, a good teacher. It didn't seem interesting for me initially. But uh, little by little, uh, one day, principal of one school called me and asked me to assist uh, or to replace uh, one teacher. And I, I said, OK, OK. Uh, I was very much afraid and excited. Uh, uh, during the first day and the situation in the school, technical uh, situation in school, I, as IT teacher, had to run from one computer to another computer, and uh, I found the situation really, really terrible or bad. And uh, after some time, after some years, I uh, um, I just um, since I started to communicate more with children, I do communicate effectively with children, uh, naughty children who um, and uh, we uh, had uh, lessons in the parliament even uh, with those uh, naughty, naughty pupils. And uh, I, you simply have to know how to approach uh, those difficult uh, children. Some people might like pupils might like uh, geography, computers, graphics. You have to see what they are interested in, and not to push and uh, say let's uh, le let's program uh, this or that. You have to see what the pupils are interested in, and to direct them toward. Uh, Mm, toward um, the area they are interested in. As Claire said, there are not interesting things, uh, subjects, informatics, for example, not an interesting subjects, but we can develop or expand our activities toward the area which is interesting. Programming might be related to poetry, to writing poetry, to so programming language. It's okay, it might be a humanitarian science. Yes, we are coming to the point when we will have to learn programming as a language. I heard a conversation between the two pupils in school. 
Uh, the girl said, uh, what uh, do you learn? Uh, what, do, what, what I teach to, in programming uh, lessons uh, to say something in programming language. So, um, uh, so the programming language is not an English language, but what we are moving toward that in a uh, slip platform. A question. I used to work in the university and uh, school. Work in school, we face more psychological stress. Therefore, young people do not choose this profession. Claire, what is your opinion? Are the pupils this element, uh, uh, those naughty uh, children who make uh, teachers work stressful? And uh, uh, can you see, for example, you are in 12th grade, the dynamic is different, relationship with teachers is different, and uh, your approach toward the teachers is different when you are 12th grade the pupil. Yes, uh, the attitude is changing. Uh, two months uh, ago, uh, I've chosen in the psychological model. We asked, interviewed teachers uh, about the stress factors, how they feel, uh, uh, what is the situation, environment, the school. Uh, pupils also contributed uh, uh, pressure of administration, pressure of parents uh, was highlighted by parents. Uh, it is a complex, uh, complex uh, phenomenon uh, uh, why parents don't feel um, good in school or comfortable in school. Maybe in smaller classes, uh, when families speak about the pro profession of the teacher and what they that uh, they tell, for example, if the parents tell their children that you have to respect teachers, because sometimes small pupils do not even understand the role of the teacher. Um, so um, education is lacking in this area, and we grow up. Uh, and uh, when we are about to graduate, uh, we have a different attitude uh, um, toward the teachers. Uh, uh, several reflections. Uh, there was an inquiry before the conference, um, which Vidotas uh, uh, Magnus University helped to carry out this investigation. Young people have been asked uh, what is their opinion um, about the motivation? What factors could motivate pupils? school pupils to choose the selection of teacher. Mm, stable uh, uh, work, stable uh, salaries, but one of the factors uh, was parents. And uh, one respondent highlighted um, in terms of motivation. Uh, he said uh, that uh, very often profession of the teacher is uh, under-evaluated not only by pupils but also by their parents. Yurgita, do you agree with that? You said, yes, you are a mother of two children. I don't know the age of your children. Uh, are they school children? No, they are, no, they are attending kindergarten, and uh, one of them is uh, pre-primary. Uh, 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 some time ago, I um, tried to lecture uh, kindergarten children um, after 40 minutes of English, English, English language lesson for four five-year-olds, I felt more exhausted than uh, in other uh, lessons to other children. Well, coming back uh, to the um, presentation of Professor Kaminskine, the public, uh, in the public discussion, there is more negative uh, rhetorics about the teacher's profession. Yes, parents are watching the news. Uh, they listen what is uh, around uh, 
especially recently from my friends, I could hear quite a lot of comment what uh, they have experienced uh, while being uh, parents of a first uh, grade pupil. And unfortunately, I hear quite a lot of negative emotions about the teacher's profession, that teachers are not respected. Um, I'm speaking about uh, primary um, school pupils. Uh, there are the answers, I don't do anything, oh, this is the role of the teacher, children are happy, pupils are happy, etc. Again, we are coming back uh, to this uh, internal motive, uh, how I feel uh, as a teacher. Um, if I remember well, some time ago there was a study performed and when primary school pupils were asked uh, about their future profession, the, uh, the answer, or frequent answer, was teacher. And when we grow up and acquire more knowledge, more skills, abilities, when we acquire more expression, less and less answers are related to teacher's profession. And while observing, we, uh, during 12 years at school, we most often uh, change our opinion. Uh, what about the role of parents? Is it important? Uh, what about the dynamics uh, uh, in cooperation and involvement of parents? Because uh, it is a community, not only you are responsible. It is not, not only, uh, only the relationship between the teachers and pupils, but parents should also be included and kind of form a certain family. Yes, I do agree that uh, school, we are an open school and we communicate uh, with parents. I invited uh, parents uh, uh, to open uh, lessons, uh, lectures. Uh, uh, they were invited to get acquainted uh, with what we do, with what their children do. Sometimes parents uh, participate in various festivities uh, organized uh, in school, and actually parents should be equal participants participants and should be engaged in the activity of their children. They are still this, uh, we um, will actually need to push them a little bit. Uh, I, um, uh, I myself was not actively involved. When my children were primary school pupils, I was more active in school life. And then little by little, you get disattached. Uh, of course, when parents start teaching teachers, then situations, uh, because we have uh, the parents who teach our teachers how to convey knowledge, or, for example, uh, to, uh, to put a higher mark uh, yes, we do face different cases, uh, and we are, I often have a right back to, to, to respond to parents that it's not a, a, um, a fair, and I am for the openness of the school. We have to be open, and we have to to mutually cooperate uh, and uh, this fashion to learn might uh, occur. It should be fashionable to learn from one another. We might, we have to, um, pupils, uh, uh, people have to be interested in learning. They, their eyes might burn and have to burn. They, they, we have to make pupils interested in the learning process. Okay. Claire. Uh, Claire, you have the final word, final say. Will you be a teacher or not? Yes. Once, I, I, I remember, I, I was thinking in the past about 
such a career pathway because I still admire uh, the calling, the vocation of a teacher, meaning you shape, you shape the lives of other people. However, um, I think um, my, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to pursue that dream just because of, you know, financial incentives, etc. You know, if we talk uh, with teachers, they say, no, 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 don't choose that pathway. Don't, don't choose to become a teacher. The teachers uh, dissuade me from that. Oh, yeah, that's not good. But again, maybe, maybe it's our cultural sort of characteristic because we are a bit crybabies. We like to complain. We focus on something that's negative. Um, and if being happy is something not quite um, not quite the norm in our country, whatever. Mm. I would like to uh, express my gratitude for these discussions, for your uh, for your time, and it was really a pleasure to listen to your ideas from different perspectives. I can see that your experiences are very different. They can be painful and limiting. On the other hand. Um, I think they're aimed um, at growth, and uh, once again, Claire, I would very much like you to consider your career pathway. Uh, yeah. It's never too late, never say never, Claire, because I chose uh, to be a teacher in um, a bit later in my life. And now, and now I also uh, enrolled the uh, Gedimina Technical University, uh, some technological just uh, program, um, study program. So with this um, cheerful note, we are going to um, uh, finish uh, the uh, discussions of today. But we have a marathon. Uh, uh, lasting four days, and towards the end of this marathon, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we have quite a significant um, prize, a surprise, and uh, meaning that all of us, at least I hope, will be enriched by the end of this marathon, because uh, the cognition of the world when it comes to education, different education systems, different countries or will be enriched and I think that's that's a bonus. So thank you very much once again. Sniagoda, Claire, Yurgita and Zanya as well, um, whom we had at the beginning of a discussion.